Why did the Decepticons try and destroy the Ark in the beginning of the movie if they intended on using it to rebuild Cybertron? Not every Decepticon knows that Sentinel Prime has secretly compromised with Megatron. In the novelization, it stated that it was Starscream who shot down the Ark, which would work because during the Washington invasion, Starscream asks Megatron what exactly was the plan meaning he wasn't fully aware of the alliance with Sentinel. Sentinel Prime can speak English right after being revived? In the novelization, it is explained that, through Optimus already knowing the language, this knowledge was transferred to Sentinel through the Matrix which is used to revive him. When Sentinel Prime was first found by Optimus and Ratchet, he didn't look any different throughout the film. So, how did he get his fire truck mode? His body in pre-Earth mode is indeed similar. However there are a few differences. His pre-Earth mode body darker color pre-Earth mode his pre-Earth mode body has no tires and some other small differences. Agent Simmons is thrown by a dread but only got a broken leg. While that does seem rather impossible, real people have survived worse circumstances. There is a television series called The Indestructibles for crashes and survivals from that kind of circumstance. When Ironhide is killed, he does not receive any mourning from the others like Jazz did in the first film. This is quite surprising, as Ironhide has remained to be one of the main Autobots throughout the series. While it is true that Jazz received mourning, while Ironhide did not, there were less Autobots at the time. And the Autobots are probably trained not to dwell on the past, but to focus on the task at hand. The Wreckers were probably letting out the grief by verbally offending and complaining to the humans who are trying to help them. It is likely they mourned him off-screen. It is also highly possible that Optimus's shocked reaction when he arrives at base could be because of Ironhide's death and Sentinel's betrayal. Also, it's hard to mourn a friend when his killer is destroying everything and trying to kill you as well. One of the characters had expressed disapproval of sending away nine Autobots on a spaceship to leave the Earth. Some may argue there are 11 Autobots, including two former Decepticons, Wheelie and Brains. Perhaps, because Wheelie and Brains have never done much to physically help their cause, they do not consider them as much use as the others. Skids and Mudflap do show up in the background of a few shots in the nest base. When the convoy comes in, they are right on the tail end but the scene cuts as they come into a clearer view. Later, skids can be seen parked next to Sideswipe, when Sam comes to nest for the first time. When the Autobots attack Sentinel Prime in the Battle of Chicago, why didn't Sentinel use his cosmic rust gun to kill them like he did with Ironhide? It is possible that Sentinel can only find it easy to use his rust gun on those who are too slow, which meant Major Lennox's men in Ironhide which is why he resorted to shield and sword instead. It is possible Sentinel viewed Ironhide more of a threat to the Decepticons than the other Autobots. After all, he was the weapon specialist. Sentinel actually was seen pulling it out late in the battle and he almost did hit Sideswipe, but the human soldiers fired a rocket missile at him which knocked him into the ground. Where were the other Autobots when Sentinel destroyed the NEST base? Lennox mentioned that the Autobots have a habit of sneaking out on their own and do not strictly obey the orders of the Nest authorities. Lennox did tell everyone not to engage Sentinel, most likely to limit casualties to both humans and Autobots. They may have left soon after Sentinel started destroying the base. Shockwave's toy has a vehicle mode, but in the film and games it is never seen.